Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about mindful versus mindful. And so I hope you can get the gist of what I'm talking about here. Mindful, all one word, meaning what we practice here quite a bit, versus mindful, two words, being your mind is full. They are very different. And I think it is Eckhart Tolle that I have heard say a couple of different times when he was speaking. He kind of giggles. It was Eckhart now that I'm thinking about him laughing and talking about, I don't like that word mindful. He goes, because I don't want my mind to be full. So I just think it's semantics, of course, but I love the word mindful, one word, and I really try to keep myself clear of two words, mindful. And mindful is a word that's thrown around quite a bit. And a lot of people don't know what it means. They've just heard it. They hear that people do mindfulness. And this can mean many different things to different people. So I wanted to get just a little bit of extra clarity here today. The magazine and website, of course, it it is a website, Mindful defines mindfulness as, and I quote, the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. And they also defined, oh no, this was from Rowan, practicing mindfulness is defined as the act of concentrating on your breathing, being aware of your breath, and being aware of what's going on around you in the present moment. So you can see how those two go together. We want to be fully present. We want to be aware of where we are. We're usually thinking about where we're going. And that's how the mind gets full because where we're going, the potential for what's out there, where we're going or what we could be doing or what's next is endless. So that would really be just constantly branching out into other what ifs, right? But if we are present, if we're in this moment, we are only in this body in this time. You are only hearing me right now. You're not hearing me in the future. You're not doing the other things that may be on your to-do list. You can let those go right now. You will get to those when you get to those. Of course, we plan in the present moment. This is where many people try to trip me up with, what about planning? Well, we plan in the present moment. We are aware that we are looking at our list of things or having a conversation about what we are going to do on this certain day or that certain day. But it is very present oriented. It isn't left in the mind to go into all of the potentials because that's endless and we can't deal with that. So we want to be sure that we're staying present and that will be our mindfulness. And when I talk about practicing mindfulness, it's the act of actually concentrating, paying attention on purpose to your breathing, being aware of your breath, and of being aware of what's going around on around you in the present moment. That's very easy to do in your meditation. That's all you do. Just be aware. And I know it sounds simple, but it's not. (laughs) I know that we just have to keep coming back to it. There isn't right or wrong. We just keep coming back. 
we often will find our minds going elsewhere. We could be thinking about the future, like I mentioned, or about work, or about a loved one in our lives, but we don't have to become overwhelmed by it if we can continue to bring ourselves back over and over again to the present moment. So what I want you to notice and to try to do is to be non-judgmental about the thoughts that come up, the feelings that come up, what you are going to do or what you're going through at this very moment. You can just be with this moment and don't judge the feelings that come up. They're in the present moment. That's awesome. Feel it, let it be there, but don't judge it. Often we go to the past. We go into, why do I feel like this? What happened that made me feel like this? We don't need to do that. We can stay in the present moment. This is mindfulness. Because what got you there, thinking more about it is not going to change it. What you want to do in the present moment, just noticing it without judgment, actually changes the equation. You are no longer flipping between the past and the future. You're just in the present moment with it. It's awesome. I really hope that you are trying it. And again, you can do that with five minutes sitting. You don't need any props or anything extra. You could just sit, notice your breath, and what's going on around you, meaning the temperature, the thoughts that come up, everything. But you don't have to do anything more than that to get started. Five minutes. Or if you prefer, you can do the 10-minute body scan that's on our website. Just go to the body scan page and put your email in and get the 10-minute body scan that's guided. That's just me talking with a little ocean in the background. And then you can begin to get used to being mindful with your body in the present moment with me in your ear. That's not necessary, but it is helpful for a lot of people. Then there's all your apps and all of that. Yes, you can do that too. But the beauty of mindfulness that I want you to pay attention to is that you can do it any place, any time. You can be mindful when you're washing the dishes This changes your whole world. When you are with the dishes, be with the dishes. Feel the water, feel the bubbles, the warmth of the water. It can be an amazing outlet and a rest for the mind to be able to just be in the present moment instead of doing the dishes and thinking about the multitude of other things that are on your to-do list. Give yourself that break. You're worth it. Mindfulness helps to put some space between ourselves and our reactions, breaking down our conditioned responses. And that is from Mindful, also from the Mindful magazine. Mindfulness helps us put some space between ourselves and our reactions, breaking down our conditioned responses. And that's important, too, because we are stuck in habits. We do have conditioned responses, and mindfulness will help us break that. I have a whole bunch more for you, but I wanted to thank today's sponsors first. We have Ned with us, and so many of the clients that I work with and group members are doing awesome with the Ned products. You know, they have made a beautiful combinations that you will find when you go to their site that can help you with uh, stress, with anxiety, or with sleep. So check them out. The CBD market has become extremely saturated, and I really trust Ned. So I hope that if you are looking for help, that you want a CBD supplement, that you will go and look at their stress, their anxiety, or their sleep combinations. They also have a new product which has been in development for over a year. It's the De-Stress Blend, and it's a formula of CBD and CBG, and it's made from the world's purest full-spectrum hemp and features botanical infusions of ashwagandha, cardamom, and cinnamon. 
CBG is known as the mother of all cannabinoids because of how effective it is at combating anxiety and stress by inhibiting the reuptake of GABA, the neurotransmitter responsible for stress regulation. So really check that out. If you want to try the new Distress Blend from Ned, a brand that we love and trust, we have a special offer for the Anxiety Coaches Podcast audience. Every order over $40 for 15% off and a free de-stress blend sample. Go to www.helloned.com slash ACP or enter ACP at checkout and take advantage of this offer. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D dot com slash ACP to get 15% off plus a free de-stress blend sample on any order over $40. Thank you, Ned, for sponsoring our show and offering our listeners a natural remedy for some of life's most common health issues. And we have Renewed with us. Your guys are going to love this. I know I do. If you drink decaf coffee, of course, coffee for anybody who's listening, but decaf if you have anxiety. If you drink that delicious drink, why not supercharge it in both the taste and health benefits? Chaga Chino, made by Renewed, is your coffee's new best friend. Just add one packet of the Chagachino mix into your decaf coffee or your latte and transform it into an adaptogenic superfood mushroom-based mocha. It is so delicious. It's vegan, keto, and has no sugar or calories. Now, it is filled with ingredients you can pronounce. It's got wild forged chaga, raw cacao, Ceylon cinnamon and monk fruit. They recommend you take this recipe two shots of espresso, decaf, of course, one packet of the Chagachino mix, and plant based milk, and pour that over ice, just like a iced latte. It's also equally delicious in drip coffee, matcha, smoothies, or just with plant based milk. I actually like it that way too. And I want you to know how delicious it tastes. It's the best tasting mushroom-based coffee product on the market. It literally tastes like mocha ice cream or cinnamon toast crunch. How can it possibly taste this good and be a super low calorie and healthy? Well, it can. One thing I want to tell you about that's super important in their blend is the fact that it's alkaline. Chaga is the most alkaline food on the planet due to its vast mineral content. Chaga Chino Chaga has more potassium than bananas, more germanium than turmeric, and more rubidium than green tea. So visit drinkrenewed.com. That's nude like naked. And use the promo code ACP at checkout to get 15% off Chagachino orders. That's drinkrenewed.com with promo code ACP at checkout for 15% off your Chagachino order. The link will be in the show notes for your convenience. So let's continue on here with our look at mindfulness. One of the things that you can do to really get yourself into a more mindful way of living, because this isn't a one and done kind of thing, and just like many things here are not one and done, but becoming more mindful or practicing mindfulness, these are lifelong practices. We don't reach graduation with mindfulness. It's a way of life. I have five little ideas here for you. And the first one is to set some time aside. And again, you don't need a meditation cushion or a bench or any sort of special equipment to access your mindfulness skills, but you need to set aside some time and space. And I know for many of you, this is going to be the biggest obstacle. So just know that, yes, it's a challenge, but you can do it. The second one is that I want you to observe the present moment as it is. The aim of mindfulness is not quieting the mind or attempting to achieve a state of eternal calm. The goal is simple. We're aiming to pay attention to the present moment, and we do that without judgment. 
I know that it's easier said than done, but with practice, you are going to be amazed how it changes. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So give it a try. The next one is let your judgments pass through. Let them pass by. They're going to come up. But when you notice the judgments that are arising in you during your practice, because that's when you're going to notice them, you're not distracted. So you can make a mental note of them and let them pass by. It's just there. You don't need to react to it. You don't need to do anything about it. The next one is return to observing the present moment as it is. When you find you got carried off, and you will, and you might not even know how long you were carried off in thought, we all go there. It's okay. You got to just smile. So when you find that your mind was carried away in thought, smile and bring yourself back to the present moment. That is practicing mindfulness. And that is the returning back to the present moment over and over and over again. And that way you begin to have that be your new default. You don't get lost forever. Like many times in meditation, I can come back to the present moment and not know how much time might have elapsed because you don't even know that you're gone. But when you know that you're gone, ah, that's mindfulness. You're aware of the present moment. You're aware that you're not doing what you wanted to be doing. So just bring yourself back to that breath. That's all. And smile because there's no judgment here. And also the last one is be kind to your wandering mind. You don't need to judge yourself for whatever thoughts crop up. Just practice recognizing when your mind has wandered off and gently bring it back. It is going to wander. Thoughts are going to come up. Judgments are going to come up. Just know that when you notice that, you're practicing mindfulness. Don't be hard on yourself. Just say, this is the practice. I'm doing it. And come back to the present moment. Then find your anchor, which I teach the breath because it's always with us. It's simple and easy. You can do it anywhere. Come back to your breath. Just notice your breath. I'm, My breath is coming in. My breath is going out. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. You don't have to have elaborate breathing technique for doing a mindfulness practice. So I hope that these little tips are helpful for you because you can add them into so many different simple ways to practice mindfulness. Remember the things you can do that are simple that can help you be mindful, such as stretching, right? Yoga poses. When you drink your water, we all drink water all throughout the day. Let that be part of your mindfulness. When you are sipping on that water, be mindful of sipping water. It's that simple. But the more times we are bring ourselves into mindfulness, the less we are filling our mind because we want to be mindful, not have a full mind. Okay? Another place is when you are eating. Chew your food slowly. You can savor the taste. That's mindfulness. When you're taking your bath or shower, be mindful of the water. When you're reading, be with what you're reading. How many times have you read a page in a book and gone to turn the page and realized you had no idea what you had just read? It happens to all of us. That is where mindfulness can be helpful. You will begin to start living your life with what you're doing. When you're reading a word on the page, you read the word on the page. You're not thinking about the next 10 things you have to do on your to-do list. We can do it with music. We can do it with dance. Any of the creative arts, painting, writing, drawing, cooking, bring your creativity into your mindfulness or bring your mindfulness into your creativity. Again, the breath is the place to start. It is the place that we have always with us, always available, and it is there as our reminder of where are you. Come back to the breath. When things get too full in the mind, you can be mindful of your breath. 
I hope this show has been helpful for you. We're going to continue on next episode with more mindfulness, but that's about it for today. So I hope again that this was helpful and that if you have any ideas that you want to share about how you are mindful, you can send those to me. And that's anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to remind you that if you want more than what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn here on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets sent in email. You'll also receive two live group coaching calls, which are recorded in case you can't attend. Those will help guide you through your challenges. And there's also a secret Facebook group for coach and community support every day, all month long. So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group dash coaching and join today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. You are the sky. Everything else, it's just the weather. And that's from Pema Children. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.